Okay, so today we're going to talk about occluded fronts. This is a new kind of front in which a cold front catches up to a warm front. So in order to understand how an occluded front works, we have to revisit cold fronts and warm fronts one more time. So remember, cold fronts, uh, high pressure uh, air mass comes bulldozes its way through a lower pressure warm air mass pushes all that warm moist air up in the sky causing abrupt and sudden precipitation accompanied by um, a drop in temperature okay and on average the front line and cold front moves much quicker because the high pressure denser air is stronger as opposed to a warm front the low pressure warm moist air is typically or it is more buoyant okay so even though it winds over a longer period of time at a 45 degree angle, the warm air mass comes into contact with the cold air mass, okay? Pushes that cold air mass and then drifts above slowly. Above the cold air mass, the warm air mass drifts above, slowly above the cold air mass, okay? So warm front, warm air mass winds, cold front, cold air mass winds. Now what I want you to do now that we know that cold fronts move faster than warm fronts, it's possible in theory, and it really does happen, that you would come across a situation where a cold front would actually catch up to a warm front. Imagine if you're on the highway, okay, and you have a car going 50 miles per hour right in front of a car that's going 60 miles per hour, and they're 100 yards apart, eventually, the one behind it is gonna catch up to it, okay? So even though that these are two different fronts, two air masses, two air masses, when, they, when the cold front, which typically moves faster than a warm front, catches up, some weird weather phenomenon is gonna happen, okay? This is called an occluded front, okay? It's gonna look something like this, okay? So you got your cold air mass coming into contact with a warm air mass, this is a cold front, pushes all that warm, moist air high up into the sky, okay, and then bulldozes its way through. And then over here, you got a warm air mass slowly overtaking a cold air mass, and that's a warm front, okay, creating that precipitation at a 45 degree angle. What's going to happen when this cold front eventually catches up with a warm front? Two things can happen, okay. This is called occlusion. Okay. So this would be the line where the two fronts would meet. So now we're not talking about two air masses, we're talking about two fronts meeting. Okay. So you have a, the cool air from a, cold, from a cold front coming into contact with cool air from a warm front. Okay. And one of those two cold air masses is going to win. Uh, there's always going to be an air mass that's more buoyant than the other. So the one that has higher pressure is always going to take the day. Okay. So here we have what you call cold occlusion. Now what occlusion means is that when the two cool air masses come into contact with each other, inevitably when the cold front catches up with the warm front, when the two cool air masses come into contact, the warm air from the warm front and the warm air from the cold front are going to mix together okay? and they're going to get pinched. The occlusion happens when the, when the warm air is, it's like a Mack truck hitting a Toyota that was in between another Mack truck. The Toyota's going to pop up in the air. Okay? It's, the, it's the weaker air masses that's going to rise so that that low pressure air mass from both uh, fronts is going to get pushed up into the sky. This is cold occlusion. So as you can see, this line, the cold, this, this cold air from the cold front was just a little bit colder than the cold air from this warm front. So as a result, this one still takes the day. So there's a, a winner between these two. Okay, so this is going to push out of the way and actually lift up. It's actually going to lift up that warm front. It's going to lift up that cooler air mass because this one is relatively lower pressure, even though that we still call it high pressure. It's relatively lower pressure compared to this one. 
Okay, so that's gonna bulldoze its way through that and then push up that cool air and then just all that warm air that was already there is gonna combine with the warm air from the other warm front. This is what you call the cold occlusion front, okay? Now there's another way that this can happen. So look at this arc right here. There's the front line. So that cold air, I call this cool air because it's relatively cooler. That cold air is bulldozing its way through and pushing up that cold air mass as well as the warm air mass from both fronts. Okay, now look at this. This is called warm occlusion. So same thing, okay? The cool, the cold front, cold air mass, and the warm front, cold air mass, are gonna come into contact, and what's gonna happen? There's gonna be occlusion of the warm, moist air from both fronts, okay? So as we know, when this comes into contact, it catches up with that. This, these two cold airs are gonna duke it out, okay? What we know is that the warm air from both is gonna be more buoyant than those two because it's warm air, okay? So we're really dealing with four air masses right now. Okay, so it's gonna push up that warm, moist air, except that this one, okay, this is the cool air mass now, and that's the cold air mass. This, this happens because this one was slightly more buoyant than that one. So instead of this one sinking under that one, okay, from the previous cold front, this one's actually gonna rise above it because the cold air this is gonna get tricky. The cold air that was initially in the warm front is higher pressure than the cold front, uh, cold air. Okay, so this one actually rises above that one. And the same thing happens, okay? Same thing happens with warm occlusion. Okay, it's just which cold air mass won in uh, which in which occlusion front okay, so you have cold occlusion and you have warm occlusion right here. We have warm occlusion where the The cold front cold air mass is actually slightly more buoyant and relatively lower pressure Than the warm front cold air mass. Okay, so same thing's gonna happen Cumulonimbus clouds this cold front still moving still cold front push all that more moist air that was from its front as well now it's pushing along with this one, okay? And this one is actually taking the day. This one is the, 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 the higher press, this is the highest pressure one overall, okay? So occlusion front, two fronts, a, a warm front and a cold front come into contact with each other because the cold front caught up with the warm front. It's all coming back to this right here. Okay, because the cold front, since the cold front moves faster than a warm front, the cold front is, is inevitably in nature gonna catch up to a warm front someday. Okay, it's gonna be at the tail end of it. Always remember that analogy with the, with the cars, okay? So when these two guys come into contact with one another, either the cold, the cold air from the cold front is gonna be higher pressure, or the cold air from the warm front is gonna be higher pressure. Depending on which one has higher pressure, when these two come into contact, is gonna determine if the cold air mass from the warm front or the cold air mass from the cold front is gonna take the day. Either way, the warm, moist air from both fronts is gonna get pinched. It's gonna cause uh, similar weather to a cold front, okay? It's a complicated front, guys. It's called a occluded front, okay? Thanks.